Hey everybody, welcome to this edition of 5 Minutes or Less of EMS. I'm your host, Kevin Mackey. We're coming to you today from Reach 50 at Mather in Sacramento, California. We have a special guest today. We're with Dr. David Duncan. We're going to talk about tranexamic acid. Thanks, Kevin. Absolutely. Glad to welcome, be here, Dave. man. Very fun. Very fun. Dave, how does TXA work? Kevin, I think the best way to think about the way TXA works is to get your brain wrapped around what we know about TPA. Everybody knows TPA is a clot buster. We use it for strokes and, you know, relatives of it for heart attacks. So it breaks down strokes that are undesirable. So we have this TPA floating around in our system, but when we have massive trauma and clots begin to form, we don't want TPA to be working. We want clots that begin to form to maintain themselves, to become stable and to block bleeding, concerning bleeding. And, uh, and when TPA is floating around, it can break those clots down. TXA is the anti-TPA. It blocks our own endogenous TPA from in turn breaking down desirable clots in trauma patients. I think that's the best way to think about it. That makes sense. Can you tell me a little bit about the history of TXA? TXA began use in clinical medicine way back in the 60s actually and found its way into surgery, big surgeries, uh, thoracic surgeries, cardiac surgeries, uh, big joint replacements, big bleeding cases. And uh, there, there are hundreds of studies on TXA in those kinds of cases with evidence that it reduces bleeding, transfusion, and mortality, but it never made its way into trauma until, you know, really the CRASH-2 study. But uh, it's been well vetted in the surgical literature for a long time where it's unfortunately lived until recently. What are the indications for the use of TXA in trauma? Kevin, we want to choose TXA for those patients, for those trauma patients we feel are high risk to bleed out. So the impending hemorrhagic shock patients are those in hemorrhagic shock. So I think that's the most notable indication is uh, severely injured trauma patients, those that meet our critical trauma triage criteria, particularly the physiologic side with a systolic less than 90 and high likelihood of bleeding. That's the number one target. And those, you know, over the age of 15 or 16, depending what your protocol may say. Okay, Dave, now that we covered a lot of the indications, can you talk to me about some of the contraindications, people we wouldn't want to use TXA in? Kevin, I think the best way to think about contraindications to TXA is to clearly break it into absolute and relative. So the biggest, strongest, boldest, absolute contraindication for the use of TXA is time from injury greater than three hours. Um, TXA is the most obscure pharmaceutical on the planet in that before three hours, great evidence that it increases survival, does wonderful things. But after three hours, it's the only drug we know of that actually causes harm. So it goes from benefit to detriment. After three hours, maybe as much as 30 or 40 percent increased mortality. So that's number one I want to leave in everybody's mind. There are some relative contraindications, sort of next tier, I think, and that's things like age less than 15 or 16 are relative contraindications. There's not great data out, not good prospective data out yet on PEDS, although there's some, some data and there's some studies in the works that we'll see soon. So age. Um, and then other forms of bleeding that can be controlled with other means. So um, extremity bleeding or even you know, uh, groin area, other forms of bleeding that can be controlled with direct pressure, hemostatic dressings, tourniquets, etc. cetera, uh, should not utilize TXA. So that's relative contraindication. Um, the other, I think, reasonably large category are isolated TBI. Uh, we have traumatic a, brain injury. Isolated traumatic brain injury. Mm -hmm. We should not yet be using TXA, although imminently in the next year we're going to see some studies I think that are going to demonstrate benefit in that area but for now we have to consider it um, a contraindication and then also remember this is for bleeding so spinal shock isolated spinal shock patients will appear hypotensive one may be inclined to reach for TXA but there's no bleeding so we shouldn't be giving it for isolated spinal shock and Dave what about pregnancy so not contraindicated in pregnant trauma patients. Uh, TXA is a category B drug. If you had a polytrauma patient that met criteria, there's no reason we shouldn't give TXA to that patient. So Dave, why has the US been slow to adopt TXA? Great question. Uh, that has been an elusive question for many. And I think it boils down to CRASH-2, biggest 
randomized, prospective, placebo-controlled trauma study ever done. We weren't invited to the party, were we? 40 countries, 240 <laughs> hospitals, not one of them was a U.S. Right. participant. Right, and we're sitting in the back of a helicopter, and in the U.S., right, it, it really rolled out in helicopters first. Right. The air medical programs, of course, the military, right. of course, was first, then air medical, right. but now we're starting to see it in the streets with street medics. Right. Yeah, I think uh, the pre-medical rotor side was a particularly good fit because we end up transporting the sickest of the sick. We have some long transport times. Uh, we can get the drug on board in that early first hour that's so important. So that was an obvious, really nice niche. Lots of critical trauma triage patients meeting criteria. Should our patients have lab testing before TXA is administered? The downside for giving the drug is so low, if not zero, that any delay in the administration of TXA may lead to a life loss that could have been saved. So we're, we're all about... Uh, preventable deaths in the trauma arena. We have to give this drug early. In fact, I've heard we have to give this drug while the patient is still alive, Kevin. Oh, okay. So just rumor. Very beneficial. Right, right. <laughs> so I don't think we should be delaying for, for lab tests, at least with these patients that obviously meet criteria. So can we use TXA in other bleeding problems, Dave? Kevin, there's no good evidence yet that we should be using it in other bleeding issues in EMS. Um, maybe with the exception of the postpartum hemorrhage that we talked a little about. Um, that's the only solid evidence we have, very similar data to trauma. But other forms of bleeding like triple A's and GI bleeds, we often don't know the onset of bleeding. So we haven't seen good evidence that it's going to improve survivability in those kinds of patients. So, you know, data's out. Now the big one. Yeah. So why should we be using this in EMS, Dave? Why should TXA be in EMS? So, Kevin... When I think about EMS and what we really do, especially in this air ambulance world, so much of what we do is prevent deaths in trauma patients, and people forget how fast these patients die. So half of all trauma patients that are going to die are DOA, nothing we can do. The 50% that leave the scene that are still bound for death, half of those are gonna die in the first hour or two. So if we really want to have an impact, we've got to move early on any intervention. That includes tourniquets, fluids, blood, all surgery, of course. But the TXA, if it's going to have an impact, has to be given early. And that was nicely demonstrated, I think, in CRASH-2 and the CALPAT study as well. The earlier you give it, the better it's going to work. And I have some posters I'd like to show okay. you real quick. Let's take a look, Dave. CRASH-2, at first blanche, people looked at it, and they made the claim that uh, overall... Mortality dropped from 16% to 14.5%. That didn't get people's attention very well. That's sort of this little dot here that I'll show. Basically, these sorts of graphs are odds ratios. And if the data falls here on the one line, that means there's really no difference between the, the TXA and the placebo. But when the data falls to the left of the line, that demonstrates improved outcomes. So at first blanche, the CRASH-2 data just showed, you know, this little data point here, a little bit better outcomes. When CRASH-2 pulled out the bleeders instead of all patients, so this includes all patients including TBI, etc., we saw better data. We get this, this red triangle here, which actually is an odds ratio of 0.85. That means 15% reduction in mortality. That's great data, but that data did uh, that data unfortunately included lots of patients we shouldn't have give t given TXA to. That's these folks over here. So when we give TXA after three hours, that's this group here, we end up with a 40% worse survival rate. Mm. So the beauty of CRASH-2 is it, it ironed out these time frames for us. But now when we remove this greater than three hours, we start getting into really impressive data, Kevin. And here's where it caught my attention, lots of others' attention. We give the drug in less than three hours, and we end up with data here. Odds ratio 0.79 means we have a 21% reduction in mortality. That's one in five patients surviving simply because they got the drug. But here's why we give it in EMS. Finally getting around to the answer to your question, if we give it in less than one hour, where we really need to be intervening if we're going to make a difference in these early trauma deaths anyway, now we have an odds ratio of 0.68, a 32% reduction wow. in mortality simply because we gave this drug in the first hour. 
So that's, that's impressive. That's the big reason that this is an EMS drug, and that's the big reason we can't be delaying care with lab tests and other things. Take home message traumatically injured patients bleeding in under an hour are going to have a 32% reduction in mortality just for getting TXA. In the first hour. Okay, so that's a wrap. Now, I know this one was longer than five minutes, but I think you'll agree with me that the information presented today by Dr. Duncan was extremely valuable, well worth it. Dave, I really thank you for walking us through all of that today. Thank you, Kevin. And uh, and I appreciate you being on the show. My pleasure, man. Anytime. What a, what a ball. Anything we can do to make a difference, you know, in our pre-hospital patients, I'm in, baby. Absolutely. Thanks. And we'll see you next time on the next edition of 5 Minutes or Less of EMS.